It has been said that in Twilight Struggle, you need to know the cards well in order to play well. Well, we're going to take you through every card one by one, and we're going to help you become a master at Twilight Struggle. This is Legendary Tactics. The Suez Crisis card is certainly an annoying event for the U.S. player to deal with, even though it can be mitigated to a large extent. So what can the Soviet player do to get the most value out of this one? Let's take a look in more detail. The Suez Crisis event is a Soviet-starred 3-up card that, if played for the event, allows the Soviet player to remove a total of 4 US influence from France, the United Kingdom, and Israel, removing no more than 2 influence per country. For the Soviet player, this is a good event that can cause the American player a lot of inconvenience. Its best use is to help remove all US influence from the Middle East at an early stage in the game. In the best case scenario, a turn 1 headline of this card, which removes the influence from Israel, followed by a successful coup in Iran, will remove US presence from the Middle East, which is going to be a great distraction for the American player especially right as the game begins. There aren't a lot of opportunities for the US player to get back into the Middle East until the mid-war, especially once the DEFCON reaches its usual level of 2. Arguably, this is a better headline than even Red Scare Purge in turn 1 because of that fact. After a successful coup in Iran, if the US player doesn't make an immediate move to expand to Lebanon, Jordan, or even Egypt, you can play this card for the event and achieve essentially the same effect in a later action round. Once the US has expanded some influence into neighboring states, this event loses some of its bite. It's not bad as a way to contribute to a play for an American-controlled France. You could headline this and then follow up with directly placing influence in France for control, for example. It can also help to negate the triggering of the Special Relationship card, which can be pretty impactful after the NATO event has been played. Or, it can be simply used to be a jerk and score a sneaky Europe scoring with advantage. Again, typically with the Suez Crisis headline followed by the European scoring card. Other than that, the three ops are welcome for any other purpose deemed necessary or useful at that moment. For the US player, this card isn't so bad if you get it in hand. Strictly mathematically, this removes up to four influence but only gives you three operations points to replace them. But most of the damage can be mitigated as long as you handle it intelligently. First of all, make sure that you expand out of Israel to Lebanon and or Jordan first. This is your insurance policy against the card being played by you or against you, so you can maintain presence in the Middle East. Israel isn't that important at this stage, as you rarely have the ops in the early war to invest there. Second, the UK is not that impactful, except in the cases of attempting to score Europe domination or to play the special relationship card, and, as explained earlier, the special relationship really only becomes impactful after the NATO event is in play. You can reinforce the UK in advance of this by using one of the influence provided by the Marshall Plan event. Otherwise, the ops will be replaced there eventually. The Soviets will not be taking over the UK anytime soon. And it's important to time the playing of this event with having no influence in France. If you have this card in hand, that's usually easy to do. Even if you have influence there already, the three ops can be used to replenish the influence lost, even if it basically means a lost turn. If you get surprised by this event when you have influence in France, you'll just have to deal with that, just like you would deal with the De Gaulle Leads France card. Be mindful of any time when the play of this event might be especially harmful and over control France if necessary. Most times for the US player, the play of this card essentially becomes a dead action round but I think it's better to get it out of the deck rather than send it to space as a general rule. You don't want it coming back as a Soviet headline down the road. 
So in summary, for the Soviet player, this is a pretty good headline, especially combined with some other cards or operations. At its worst, it is still an inconvenient event for the US to deal with, or a solid three ops card. For the US player, this is a card to be mindful of, but one that can be worked around. There are a few of these Soviet events in the early war which most times end up in a dead action round, but that's the way the early war goes for the American in this game. This has been our analysis of the Suez Crisis card in Twilight Struggle. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you got some value out of this video, and if you did, please like and please subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you next time. This is NATO with Legendary Tactics.